<coughs> as you will notice uh, very quickly, I will speak in Franklish, so sorry for my Franklish. Um, um, and uh, I would like to say also that Alain was very uh, sorry not to be here, but now uh, um, his wife is in a critical moment of the pregnancy and it's hard to choose between uh, uh, a conference and um, uh, a child. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the figure of the Rahib, that is to say the monk, is known to pre-Islamic poetry as well as to the Quran. The pre-Islamic poets refer to the monk in his cell, the light of which the traveler by night sees in the distance and which gives him the idea of a shelter. In the Quran, the monk is considered as one of the religious leaders of the Christians. The Muslims' view about the monastic life was sometimes negative, uh, sometimes positive, of course. The Quran is, um, in the Quran, it is said that the rabbis and the monks uh, li uh, li sorry, live at the expense of other men, and that Christians have taken as their masters, instead of God, their monks and uh, uh, Jesus. But at the same time, they had a kind of respect for Christian monks, and it is uh, as it is reflected also in the terms of the surrender made out in Al Hira in 633. So, Al Hira was uh, 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 an important Christian Arab settlement on the middle Euphrates. And according to uh, this agreement, monks who did not work for a living and who had wholly abandoned worldly life were not required to pay the jizya, but uh, they were still considered to belong the, to the protected people. It is clear that uh, Muslims had a kind of intellectual curiosity for monasteries. Um, the poet uh, Jahza, who lived in the 9th and 10th century, uh, while staying in Al-Kufa, was invited to visit the monastery of uh, Yohanna, the De Derhana, um, a monastery near Al-Hira. And he left a marvelous description of uh, the monastery, as you can see, uh, you can, as you can see here on the, the, the slides. So, in our contribution, we would like to study the relationship between the monasteries and Arab authorities between the 7th and the 10th centuries. For this purpose, we would like to study first uh, and briefly the literary material that uh, is uh, useful for our purpose. And then we will uh, show what kind of information we can find in, um, in, in um, documentary material, documentary sources. So, the literary sources that inform us about Egyptian monasteries at the beginning of the, the Arab occupation of Egypt are scarce and often the results of successive phases of a rewriting process. These works uh, are also written, and that we have to keep in mind, uh, are also written, uh, uh, written sorry, in a particular per perspective by people whose confessional orientation can sometimes alter the objectivity of the historical account. Two major um, works uh, will be used here uh, for our presentation. The first one is El Shabushti's book, uh, known as the um, Kitab et Diera, so the, the, the book of, uh, of the monasteries, that describes, uh, that describes many existing monasteries in the 9th and 10th centuries. This work belongs to um, um, a genre uh, of Muslim social writing called the uh, Diyarat literature, developed and continued in the 9th and 10th centuries, and which describes non Muslim and their institutions, <coughs> in particular uh, the Christian monasteries. It is an especially interesting type of material for the attention given to non Muslims and their cultural and social influence. This literature ranges from subjects as diverse as uh, the beauty of gardens uh, to the pleasure <coughs> of forbidden activities, as uh, you can see uh, in the next uh, quotation I give you on the slide. 
The author of this book, uh, Ashabushti, uh, who lived in the middle of the 10th century, was origi originally uh, from Persia and became the private li librarian of Caliph al-Hakim, so in the beginning of the uh, 11th century. For an unknown reason, though having worked uh, in Egypt, Ashabushti uh, focused the majority of his three sections uh, work on Mesopotamia rather than Egypt and the surrounding Palestinian monasteries. <coughs> so he left uh, four description of uh, Egyptian monasteries, but we have to say that uh, the kind of description he is giving us uh, in his book is not very useful for uh, the study of uh, relation, the relationship between monks and Arabs. Uh, because uh, the descriptions given by him are more um, uh, general descriptions about the layout of the place and so on. Um, here on the slide you have an example of um, his description of the monastery of El Qusayr. While the first work I mentioned was written in a Muslim context, the second uh, work I will mention uh, was written in a Christian milieu. It is the history of the patriarchs that is considered the, the official chronicle of the Coptic Church. The main chapters of uh, the history of the patriarchs were written in Arabic uh, and sometimes translated from Coptic in different stages between, <coughs> between the 9th and the 12th century. This um, work hardly adopts any positive attitude towards the Arabs and Arab officials. But a lot of information can be, can be drawn, uh, can be drawn sorry, from the history of the, the, the patriarchs about the relationships of uh, monks and monasteries with Arab officials. However, we have to keep in mind that though being a chronicle, this work was also uh, written in a hagiographical hagi perspective, which means that it tends to present the Copts as persecuted by the Arabs, uh, as the Christ uh, uh, was uh, persecuted by, uh, by the Romans. From time to time, uh, the description uh, left in the history of the patriarchs uh, about Arab officials is uh, is well positive, and uh, those officials are sometimes uh, described as balanced and good men. So here is an example of the description left about a governor called Abu Aoun, who was described as a, as a good man. Here is another example. But most of the time, the Arab officials and their, uh, in their relationship with the church and especially the monasteries uh, tend to be perceived, perceived very negatively. Arab officials are said to have imposed heavy taxes on the monks and on the monasteries that seriously impoverished the church. Um, I would like to, to, to say a word here about the, the translation and the text uh, given by Evitz uh, in his, um, in his uh, edition of the History of the Patriarchs. So in the history, uh, in his edition, he, um, um, well, he made an, an, an edition and a translation that uh, makes the description uh, even more dramatic because in his text, Evetz uh, read the words Achsa al ruhban and understood that the governor uh, castrated all the monks. But in fact, uh, you have to uh, take out uh, a little dot and then you have Achsa al ruhban which means that he only counted uh, the monks. <laughs> he made a survey uh, of the existing monks uh, to, in order to, uh, to impose heavy taxes on the monks. There would be no point of castrating monks if you want to uh, to um, to levy taxes, of course. <laughs> so Arab officials are also described as interfering in the business of the monasteries and the Coptic Church, regulating the church and being aware of every little thing happening inside it. <coughs> A nice example is uh, given about Al Azbah, so the son of uh, the governor Abdelaziz bin Marwan. So end of the 7th century, 
And Al Asbach was said to uh, to read every little book um, that uh, was written by the cops in order to see if there was not any um, uh, bad ideas or uh, polemical ideas against the Muslims. Another anecdote uh, reported by the history of the patriarchs uh, occurred in the time when Qurra bin Sharif was um, governor. At the time, we see uh, that Qurra, held by uh, <coughs> Coptic tax collector named John, who was very close to the governor, fought against heresy in the Coptic church by imposing higher taxes on the Christians who were not following the rules of orthodoxy. So this is uh, another example of the Arab uh, uh, officials controlling and regulating the, the Coptic church and monasteries. <laughs> not only were the Arabs uh, imposing heavy taxes on Christians, and controlling institutions, but the history of the patriarchs also reports that even when uh, they were visiting Coptic monasteries, uh, monasteries they behaved uh, inappropriate, inappropriately and were trying to steal the belongings of the monks. Here is a, a, nice, uh, a nice example given in the history of the patriarchs. Uh, the director of finances named Al Qasim was traveling uh, on the Nile, and at this occasion he passed along uh, the, the old town of uh, Ancina and visited the monastery, uh, the, the theater, uh, the, the, the antique theater of, uh, of uh, Antinoe, uh, who was uh, very uh, recognizable when he was see, uh, uh, sailing on the, on the Nile at this period. And um, while uh, sailing uh, on the Nile, he stopped in uh, the monastery of uh, Apache Nute. And uh, there uh, behaved uh, very well, very badly, because he entered the church uh, riding his horse, and one of his companions tried to uh, buy or wanted to buy the chest containing the rest of uh, the body of Shemute's body um, to bring it back to Fustats. So, as I said, the history of the patriarchs, as well as uh, Shabushti's book, are uh, religiously oriented in nature and pursue uh, specific goals. And it is hard to know where the truth lies. Uh, where the truth lies, <coughs> sorry. Um, papyrological, the papyrological material, and to some extent the epigraphical material, allow allow us to, to check the accuracy uh, of uh, some of those literary accounts. But before going uh, further, let's talk about the corpus we'll be using. So we'll focus on uh, an epigraphical and uh, papyrological material dated mainly from the 7th and the 8th century, and we will benefit from time to time from uh, later centuries material. The material we'll be using is mainly written in Coptic, but some uh, is uh, written in, uh, in Greek and Arabic. I must say that it comes, uh, of course, uh, mainly from a monastic milieu, and especially from, from Middle and Southern uh, Egypt. As a caveat, uh, I should say that uh, the, the Arabs are rarely mentioned in monastic material, so it's very hard to study uh, uh, the relationship between the, those two uh, groups only uh, relying on uh, uh, documentary sources. <coughs> so the relation between Arab officials and monasteries is well attested by uh, the papyrological material in the field of taxation. Uh, monasteries, and more generally, the, the Coptic Church, were preferred intermedi intermediary uh, between taxpayers and the treasure. Uh, it appears clearly from a letter sent by Kurra to Basilios um, that it was usual for uh, the ecclesiastical authorities to collect uh, taxes from their fellow Christians and uh, then to, to send them the money to uh, the treasure. <coughs> In the monastery of Bawit, um, and we can wonder whether this was not the case in all the Egyptian monasteries, some people called uh, the brethren of the Andrismos, so the, 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 the brother, uh, the, the, the brethren of the, the Holtax, were uh, in charge of the collection of the taxes that need to be paid to the Arab authorities. 
So what kind of taxes were they paying at that time? So since the, the Byzantine period, monasteries had to pay, of course, uh, land tax, and this continued uh, in the Arabic period. The major innov innovation that the Arabs introduced uh, was to impose the payment of poll tax uh, on the monks. Up to the time of El Azbach, uh, it, as it seems, they were exempted from it. Um, <clears throat> The payment of the poll tax by, by the monks brought a lot uh, of money, as uh, we can see. Uh, where is it? Okay, there is a bit uh, a problem here. So, as we can see uh, from this account, uh, one of the first Arab accounts, Arabic accounts, uh, which mentions the poll tax paid by uh, by the monks, and uh, for the the. The town of Medina Tel Fayum, they had to pay for the year uh, 107, so that is to say uh, 725, 726, uh, 100, uh, dinar, 100 dinars, um, no, 156 dinars uh, for this uh, poll tax. Uh, yeah. Besides uh, the, ex uh, the ordinary taxes, monks has, had also to pay extraordinary taxes, mainly requisitions uh, for, for, the, for the army or the fleet as uh, those uh, uh, appearing on the slides. They were also paying ex extraordinary taxes for the construction of, um, uh, of specific buildings um, and this appears in an antagonist font in the monastery of Wadi Sarga and dated from 7, uh, 710, where Kura asks the, uh, the requisition for, work to, for workers that should take part in the construction of the uh, Caliph's palace. The construction works having, um, have been put under the supervision of a man called Yahya ibn Hamdallah, who uh, is known from literary sources as the one um, who was in charge of the construction of, of a great mosque in Fustat. Sometimes, of course, uh, monasteries weren't able to pay all the heavy taxes they had to pay, and uh, in order to do so, they had to borrow money. In P. Uh, P Baliza uh, 102, um, it appears that the monastery had to uh, borrow money from uh, the the local Arab official in order to pay the taxes. And what is very nice in this text is that the word uh, debt used in, uh, in Coptic is rendered as dune, which, which is uh, uh, an adaptation of the Arabic edain, meaning uh, the, the debt. But Arab authorities did not jest about the payment of taxes. And when a monastery was not paying its taxes in due time, the officials in charge of the collection used the threat against the monks. In P. Uh, Mish Kopt uh, 15, <coughs> uh, whose, uh, read, uh, whose reading of the address was recently revised by Alain Delattre, an Arab official called Ibrahim, son of Ibn Abdurrahman, threatens uh, Theodoros, uh, which was probably, uh, who was probably the head of the monastery of Bawit or someone important in the monastery. Uh, he threatens uh, Theodoros uh, to uh, take the money out of his uh, bones. So, um, to avoid paying taxes, many, uh, many taxpayers were uh, fleeing from the fiscal district they were living in and were registered, uh, registered in. And you know, in order to avoid uh, these uh, people from fleeing uh, the, the, the fiscal districts, uh, the Egyptian treasure, treasury imposed restrictions on the free movement of persons. And everyone wanting to travel had to, uh, to ask for a special permission issued in the form of a document called the Safe Conduct, or Sigilion, or Sigil in Arabic. What is striking is that uh, monks uh, seem, seem uh, to have been, been especially impeded from traveling freely, whereas all the non-religious applicants for Safe Conduct were traveling from, uh, for example, the Theban region to Fustat, or for, from Medan Egypt to Fustat, 
um, uh, the the monks were applying uh, the monks applying for safe conducts were making short travels, for example, from the Theban mountain to the town of Jaime or from uh, the monastery of uh, Abba Iremias in Sakara uh, to Fustat. And it is hard to know uh, why precisely this happened, but we could imagine that the Arab authorities were more <coughs> suspicious about about the monks than uh, uh, about anybody else, maybe uh, because of their uh, political and religious uh, uh, ideas, which could harm uh, the, 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 the image of the Arab authorities. So here is an example um, of uh, a safe conduct. Sorry, I'm, I'm going fast because time is elapsing. Okay, so as I already said, Arabic literature re records many visits of Arab officials in the Egyptian monasteries, but uh, do um, the papyri and inscription record such visits? That's a good question we could, uh, we could ask. Well, we have mentions uh, of visits, but they are very scarce. Um, in Bawit, local officials were visiting the monastery, and at this occasion, uh, usually uh, got some honey or uh, boiled wine. Those deliveries are recorded in uh, documents uh, or the, called uh, order of deliveries, such as this one. Um, sorry. Um, and uh, we have also mentions in Bawit of uh, Arab officials visit, or Arab visiting the monastery in uh, this uh, beautiful graffiti left uh, in uh, a large room which was designed to accommodate the pilgrims and the visitors of the monastery. This text is especially interesting as it shows uh, a Christian called Georgios, who was a client of an Arab called Abdallah, son of Amru, appearing together with a man called Muhaji, the son of Hajlan, who was probably an Arab immigrant uh, whose family arrived in Egypt with the conquest. <coughs> Similar visit of uh, uh, Arab officials are recorded in Saqqara. One of these inscriptions uh, found in the church mentions the visit of a preacher, a khatib, inside the church uh, around the uh, 10th century. So, if uh, most of the visits were ha probably happening without any problem, we have some uh, traces of uh, problematical uh, visits of uh, Arab officials. In Peer Islands 211, a petition from the reign of Ahmad ibn Tulun, so 10th century, uh, we uh, see some monks from a monastery of the region of Asyut complaining about Arab officials who were welcomed in a monastery, got food, and then started to beat uh, started to beat uh, the monks and extort, uh, and started to uh, extort money from them. So to sum up, um, the attitude of the Arabs toward monks and monasteries has always been contrasted, as um, are the sources related to this subject. The literary text laments sometimes the oppression of the monks, as uh, it is the case in the history of the patriarchs, and sometimes uh, mentions the Arab uh, benevolence and curiosity towards, um, towards monastic institutions, as we've seen in the Kitab uh, uh, of Shabushti. The diverging sources, as we have seen, are difficult to reconcile and their confessional nature does not fully explain their disparity. <coughs> the Greek and Coptic papyri uh, coming from the monasteries, with very few exceptions, only mention Arab uh, authorities on questions of taxation. Monks and monasteries were heavily taxed, as we have seen, and could not always pay, pay their debts, which sometimes led to uprisings uh, uh, in, uh, in monasteries. The restriction on free circulation must in all likelihood be regarded as a consequence of uh, a suspicion regard from uh, the Arab side uh, towards uh, the, uh, the monks and uh, the monasteries. On the other hand, inscriptions uh, show Muslim visiting monasteries and uh, papyrological, the papyrological documentation 
uh, also show the involvement of uh, Muslims in the social and economic life of the uh, monastic establishments. The Egyptian material thus offers an interesting and nuanced uh, picture of the contrasted and sometimes paradoxical relationship between the Muslims and the monks, between the caliphate and the monastic institution. It would be interesting to compare what we uh, see, what we can observe in Egypt with uh, uh, the situation we can uh, um, observe in other areas of the Muslim empire. So, thank you very much.